Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield You're talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people, and we've got one for you today. A legend, Ruth Maddock. How are you? I'm fine, Alex. How are you? I love you so much. I mean, you're a breath of fresh air on the <laughs> stage. You're a breath of fresh air in real life, and you've been with me my entire life. You're a legend. Oh, I don't know about a leg end, uh, but um, no, uh, it's lovely. Uh, when I look out in the auditorium, they're all my age group. <laughs> it's amazing, you know, all these grey haired ladies. Um, it's a great piece to do this. It really is. I did the play for three years, playing another character in it. But this is a great little part, this one. It's a great little part. Not so little, really. I mean, you work hard in it, and let's face it, you get the biggest laughs. <laughs> well, Tim Firth has given me some wonderful lines. You know, and all you've got to do is do them. I love as well he plays your strength. I mean, we get a little bit of Gladys in places, don't we? Yes. And we get some of those Welsh uh, zingers and ad-libs and all that stuff, which are so brilliant and perfectly written in this play. Is there any wiggle room for you to ad-lib in this, or is it as it's written? No, you must stick to his script, because he's such a wordsmith, mm. this man. He really, really is. I'm very proud to be associated with him because he's one of our great writers at the moment. Yeah. He really is. And it's funny and it's witty and it's also devastating and upsetting mm. and takes us to places where we think because, of course, we all know somebody who's been affected by cancer yeah. and that is the takeaway from this, isn't it? That from the darkness becomes the laughter, but yeah. this is the circle of life and reality. Absolutely. You're dead right there. You look out, you know, and there are people crying in the auditorium, but... The laughter is very immediate in it. And that's what's so great, what he's done with this musical. Mm. The play was darker, um, but the musical, he's really handled tragedy so well. Well, you can, of course, when you've got music. And Mr. Barlow's written some wonderful tunes. So, you know, it's a real joy to do it. It really is. You have been in constant work for decades, and it's amazing to me when you look down what you've done. It's quicker to list what you haven't, I suppose. Is it still amazing to you when the phone rings and it goes, we want you? No, we really want you. It certainly is, because um, about five years ago, uh, when I was 70, um, I thought, oh, well, it'll dry up now, you know. And it hasn't. It's got more and more and more. And that's so wonderful about my profession is that you don't have to retire. If you can cut the mustard, you know, uh, i.e. say your lines and don't bump into the furniture, <laughs> as uh, Jimmy Perry used to say, um, <laughs> then you will be employed because there are a limited amount of people that actually want to, of my age group, that actually want to go on tour. But I think probably, Alex, this will be my last big one. Mind you, I said that last year with The Wedding Singer, right. which I thoroughly enjoyed as well. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what will happen. I'd like to think that um, this will be my last big one because it's such a good piece. Mm. You know, it really is to go out with a bang touring. Of course, I shall do other things in the business, like my tallies and my voiceovers and all the rest of it. So that'll keep me happy. Well, it was funny last week. There I was sat having my lunch. I was having a croissant or something. And I switched on BBC One. Doctors came on and there you were with Sue. What What was all that about? Well, what was it all about? <laughs> I know. I know. It was, it was very camp, that. Um, <laughs> for doctors. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> um, actually, I, I didn't see it. But that, obviously, you know, I did it. I didn't see it because I was doing something that particular day. And I, I, was, I was doing some filming. You missed so, a treat. You must watch yourself occasionally. You're very good at it. Am I? Yes. Oh, that's all right then. Yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> Never let yourself down. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, that's all right then. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, it, I just get the work now. I mean, I've got a new thing coming out um, in January um, for ITV called Hard to Please Old Age Pensioners, which is, I think, will be very funny. It's like um, grumpy old men and women meet one another <laughs> on various situations. Um, so it's, I think that'll be quite fun. Uh, I do hope the public like it. 
You yeah. never stop, do you? I mean, even on your days off from this, a bit like Danny, we were talking to earlier, she's off doing loose swimming. You're all doing different things. I wonder what your life is now, because it could be very lovely in Swansea, just enjoying life and doing nothing. You choose to do this. You could be at home. There is a payoff, isn't there? Because touring is tough. Touring is tough, and especially this schedule, which is Tuesday one show, Wednesday two, Thursday two, one on Friday and two on Saturday, and then you leave the venue right. to go on to the next venue. And it is quite tiring that. Uh, this is why I must think of not myself, but my husband, God love him, because he does all the driving. And he's a 77 year old, so I've got to think about that sort of thing. Uh, I, as I say, this probably will be my very last big uh, tour. But I'm missing the grandchildren this time. It's not, I, I'm not terribly maternal, but I do love my grandchildren a lot. And I love, obviously, my children as well. But they can fend for themselves, you know. <laughs> They're 51-year-olds and 49-year-olds and all the rest of it. Less worried but about those. I, I don't worry about them. <laughs> but the grandchildren, you know, I do. So I'll be looking forward now to this break that we've got at the end of November until the beginning of January. Mm. You know, it'll be lovely. No. You look as fit as a trout on the stage. It's amazing the energy you have. And I, I remember only about a year ago, I was with Ken Dodd in Blackpool, a 90-year-old man who looked 35 when the curtain went up. There is something about that, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. And it's not only, you know, doing the stage. And it is only the stage that you actually get this, I think. It's working with younger folk. And that is so stimulating. Right. It really, really is. It's great, great fun. Sometimes I can knock the reds together. <laughs> but, you know, um, I have to sort of keep stum a bit because they do tend to sort of patronise me a bit, you know. <laughs> and I go... Mm. But uh, it's all right, you know, and it does keep you going, that the, being with the young people and knowing their difficulties when right. they're starting out in the business. It's, it's quite important that we remember where we came from. And know. also remember the fact that when you started, I think it was a different business and there were mega stars in the day as you were. I mean, when we look back five decades, and it is nearly five decades, I mean, you were one of the biggest stars in the country. It's really hard to do that now because there's obviously seven million TV channels and everybody's watching a different one. So I suppose they look at you with great reverence and I hope you realise that. Well, I hope they're not frightened of me. Well, let them be frightened of me. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm soft I don't think anybody's it? frightened of you. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, it has altered. It really, really has, Alex. And this is why, I suppose, before I'm much older, I have to write the book. Everybody seems to be writing books. I mean, Denise has written about three. And, uh, you know, somebody else in the cast has written two. And, and Fern Britain's always writing a book. <laughs> and I thought, well... I should really because it was very different when I came into the business but you know these mega stars that you're talking about you know the Tommy Trinders the Arthur Askeys you know and all these wonderful people and people that I had the privilege of working with Bob Monkhouse they were not inaccessible today's stars are very inaccessible. Everything's done on social media. Right. And I think that's wrong. I think they were not. They, they had all their fans at the stage door and they went out and they met their fans. And it's very important that people do that. But Some, it is exhausting. I mean, I've been out with you. I mean, you don't get more than two bites into a piece of pizza before somebody wants a selfie. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean that's my problem if I tend to go and sit on a you know a, a curb a, um, cafe you know which is what we did the last time um, so that was our, my fault really but um, no the, you you really got to know yeah. I think and understand and of course when I came into the business there was no amplification right you literally had your own voice and your own mechanics to actually rely on. This is why you had to know how to use them. Right. Uh, and now, of course, we're very lucky that we're amplified. Once you, they started amplifying in a pit, 
we had to be amplified yeah. on stage, you see. Yeah. So that didn't come in really until the mid-70s properly. Wow. Because even Man of La Mancha that I did in the West End was a musical play like this with wonderful music in it, but nobody had a mic mm. because the orchestra, which was 36 piece, wow. was not amplified. Wow. Very interesting. And again, do you realise how lucky you were? I don't think even in the West End today you would ever get that size of orchestra outside of the national. I mean, probably 12 is the average. Some have eight, some have six, some use a CD. Well, it's a really privileged position to be in, to have had those days oh, when, yes. when they gave you everything. I mean, and when I did the film of Fiddler, it was a 72-piece orchestra was it really? I sang with. You know, that was amazing. And they were very thrilling. Mm. They really, really were. You know, and watch the colour that you could get. And also, they accompanied you. Right. Which is, ve is very interesting. Did you ever let the pin focus take over and the ego got out of control? Because let's face it, when you're the star of the show and they're playing for you and your name's on the poster and you're on the billboards and all of this, it's easy to get carried away. Did you ever lose yourself? Actually, I didn't. I'll tell you why. Because I had two children that right. so used to say to me, Oh, Mum, you're not going out doing that Gladys puke again, are you? You say, Oh, poor Gladys, Gladys puke. You know, so, I mean, I had no chance. I said, Gladys puke is paying for your education, lovely boy, lovely girl. You know, so, I had no chance, you know, um, which has been marvellous because. Um, it's, I think it's a bit sad when you have ego because it can get in the way, right. you know, um, of yourself, you right. see. Because you you're not born with an ego. You have to acquire an ego. Yeah. But you have to be very evolved to keep it intact, don't you? And, and say, right, calm down now, you're getting ahead of yourself. Yes, you do, but that's why I've always come back to the theatre. <laughs> yes. Where, yes. you know, you, you have to cut the muster. Mm. You know, you have to do it. Yeah. And... Um, that's why I've always had my roots in theatre, because there's always somebody much better than me at that stage. And when you've got to go home and do your own draws, there's no ego Absolutely, there. no, nothing. I'm going to let you get back to the husband because uh, he is so loyal and he loves you so much, <laughs> and I know you do him too. Congratulations on everything. Thank, Thank you so you. much for your time. And come and see Callan because you're magnificent in it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you.